In this quick video, I would like to briefly introduce you to smart objects and show you some very practical examples of how and when you should use them. Okay, so I have a simple JPEG file open just here. A single background layer is here inside of the layers panel. Now I'm going to free transform this. So let's unlock the background layer by clicking on the padlock icon just here. I'm going to invoke this command here guys, free transform a few times. So command and control T will allow me to do that. So command and control T, let's make this layer teeny tiny and commit that by pressing enter or return. Let's apply that free transform a second time. Command or control T, bring this up and commit that with an enter or return. Now, no big surprises here, guys. This looks like rubbish because of course, when we made this thing very small, most of the pixel information was thrown away. So this is Photoshop's best effort to make this thing large again. So uh, tuck that away for a minute. We'll revisit this in just a few moments. And let me back up a few steps. Okay, so this is our original file just here. Let me show you a second scenario. So I have my background layer selected, filter, sharpen, and then unsharp mask. So I'm going to ridiculously over sharpen this guys, just so you can really see what's going on just here. Possibly a little bit too much. There we go, choosing okay. Now I have sharpened the file, of course. Now um, let's say I have saved and closed my work and reopened it the following day. Of course, I'm now looking at this with fresh eyes. I've ridiculously over sharpened this. How can I possibly go backwards? I can't. So the big summation for both of the things that I just showed you there guys is, these are destructive changes. We've been changing pixel information that can't easily be undone. It may not even be physically possible to undo it. So again, let me undo a few steps here. This is where smart objects can be incredibly helpful. So again, back at the original starting position for this JPEG file, within the layers panel, if I right mouse click on this background layer, convert to smart object, or if having unlocked the background layer, I right mouse click on a layer, I have a much larger menu, but I still have convert to smart object just here. Okay, so when I activate that option, nothing visually changes out here, but you'll see a little icon has appeared on the thumbnail for that layer within the layers panel. This is Photoshop letting you know this is now a smart object. What Photoshop has done is taken the contents of that layer, put it inside of a smart object, which is basically an embedded file within this overall file. So we are now free to apply things like free transform or sharpen this or any other kind of filter, knowing that the pixel information is tucked away within this embedded file, within this smart object, and it is protected. So let's give this a try. So we now have our smart object, command or control T. Let's make this thing teeny tiny and commit it. Let's apply that a second time, command or control T. Let's make this nice and large. Check it out. Fantastic, we are exactly back where we started, guys. Having made potentially hundreds of free transformations, this thing's going to look fantastic every single time. Let's go back to filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. Let's apply our crazy filter again, choose OK. Now check out our layers panel. This is interesting, this is something new. We now have an entry for unsharp mask. The eyeball next to that lets us turn that filter off. Clicking that area again, we'll turn that filter back on. What's even more powerful again is where it says unsharp mask, we can simply double click on that. Here is the dialog box for the unsharp mask filter. We can make some changes, dial in some slightly more realistic numbers, choose OK. And again, if we toggle the eyeball off and on, we can see that little bit of sharpening has indeed applied, but been applied in a non-destructive way. Guys, if I save this file as a Photoshop file and open it tomorrow or next week, this layers panel will look exactly the same. I could throw away that filter at any point and I'd be back exactly where I started. You do still have access to this pixel information. So notice I do only have one file open at the moment. You can see I only have one tab open just here. Now within the layer itself, if I double click the layer, it's going to open up layer style. So I'll cancel out of there. Make sure you double click on the thumbnail for the smart object itself. And if I do that, it will actually open up the contents of that smart object. So you can see that's what this second tab is just up here. That is the contents of the smart object. So guys, I could add content to this. I could tweak things that I like. Then I would just save and close that. Now, when you save that, it's not saving it to disk. It's saving it back to this overall original file. 
So that's a very brief introduction to smart objects, guys. I hope uh, it gives you some cool ideas on how to potentially use it and see how awesome they really are. I hope that helps. Catch you later.